This is question three of the six questions in the final exam. Consider the pump circuit shown and uh, part A. Express the gain of the first stage symbolically in terms of the resistors uh, values R1 through R5. So we need to find G V2 over uh, V1. This is V2, the output of this stage, and this is V1, the input. Let's work on this part. Well, I can barely make those little subscripts. Uh, let me rewrite them. Better like this. Well, we need to find V2. We go first to the P node, of this one, and find there is no current here, of course. So this is a voltage divider, and we say VP is simply a voltage divider of V1 over those two resistors. Done. Because there is negative feedback up here, the voltage of of the inverting node is going to be the same as Vp. So this one here, Vn, is going to be exactly the same value as Vp. We know that because there is negative feedback. Now the question is to find V2. What is the output of voltage? You say, well, the output voltage is going to be this current, whatever current that is. We need to determine that. Multiply by this resistor, that is this voltage, plus Vn. Mm, let's write it like that. So we say V2 is going to be Vn, whatever value I have there, plus this drop. You're saying that is plus R5 multiplied by the current flowing through. What current is that? Well, let's see. This current here is zero. We know that for sure. So the current and the resistor are uh, R5 is the same one here. And that is the sum of this one plus this one. So that current is the sum of, who is this? Vn divided by R1 mm -hmm. plus the one on this branch. Vn minus V1 over R2. Like so. And that is the output uh, of voltage, right? Right, we can factor out Vn, can't we? Sure we can. And then after factoring out, replace that with this expression in V1. Uh, let's do that. And mm. see V1, there is a 1 here, plus uh, R5 over R1. That is correct. And then this R5 over R2. R5 over R2. We're doing good. 1, 2, 3. And here is Vn. But Vn is already given by this term. So let me write it as R3. That multiplies by R3 plus R4, a voltage divider. And here is V1. And uh, negative minus R5 over R2. V1. So we can factor out V1, move it to the other side and say that G defined as V2 over V1. The voltage gain is just all of this expression, these resistors. If you think I'm speaking too quietly, it's because it's uh, 5.30 in the morning. Mm, minus R5 over R2. That is the answer to part A. That's right. To this part. And then what? For this part B, we concentrate on this second stage of the circuit. It says, of the two dashed boxes, one must contain a 500 millihenry inductor, and the other must contain another linear passive element, either a resistor, capacitor or inductor. So that the output, this one, is negative 0.002, the derivative of the input V2, this one, V2, with respect to time. So this circuit here is a differentiator. It takes the derivative of the input 
and multiplies that by negative 0 0.002 and puts that at the output. What circuit is that? Let's bring back memories. In class, we saw a circuit that could find the derivative of an input signal. If that circuit had a capacitor, though not an inductor, it looked like this, right? It looked like this, the one we saw in class. This circuit could find the derivative of the input and put that at the output. Hmm. Well, but we have to do the same with an inductor. It stands to reason that because the capacitor and the inductor behaves as a mirror to one another, we achieve the same derivative. We have to prove it by this other circuit. We move the resistor over here and then in lieu of the capacitor we're going to put here the inductor. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Let's see. This is the input. Input. Uh, this voltage Vp is zero. Negative feedback, the voltage here is going to be zero volts as well. Okay. So that means that this current is going to be Vi minus zero over. Aha, uh -huh, that is Vi over R. Because this input current is zero, that means that this current Vi over R is going to be flowing through the inductor. And then the output voltage is going to be zero minus the voltage drop in the inductor, which is hmm, minus L D I D T, right? L, what is the I D T? This is a constant R. And the I D T would be D V input over T. So this circuit indeed can find the derivative of the input and multiply that time this negative constant. Well, that means that is what we need uh, to do in this exercise. We fill in the box. In here, we put the inductor. Half a Henry, that is the value given, 500 millihenries, and the resistor has to go in here. We still need to find what is the value of that resistor. No problemo. Check it out. So the output voltage, this one, is negative 0 0.002. This value is 0 0.002. 0 0.002. That means that R is going to be half a Henry divided by 0 0.002. That is 200 and 50 ohms. This is its value and that solves part B of this exercise. Now for part C we replace all of those resistors by numerical values I like so 3 ohms and 8, 4, 4 and 22. And uh, the input V1 is a function of time it's zero all the way to negative one milliseconds and then it ramps up to four volts at t equals zero stays at four volts up to one millisecond and ramps down to zero and reaches zero at four milliseconds with that input signal here what is the output of voltage here as a function of time and we need to plot that v naught here as a function of time Hmm. Well, let's see. If there is a constant gain between this input and that output. We determined a formula for that in part A. With the numerical values we have, we replace those numerical values in the formula we had in part A, and we compute what is the gain, the gain for this part C with the numerical values was 2.7. So that means that whatever voltage we put here, the output V2 is going to be 2.79 times that. And then whatever signal we put here at V2 will be multiplied by negative 0 0.002 and differentiated to put it on the output. So that means that V0 is going to be hmm, negative 0 0.002 that multiplies 2.79 that multiplies the derivative of this V1 with respect to time. So that's going to be the input. Uh, let me use Newton's notation for derivatives instead of uh, Leibniz because it's more concise like this, right? The time derivative of V1, that's going to be the output. So let's find 
what is a derivative of v1 this is v1 okay the derivative of that one is going to be zero here and zero there and zero there so that derivative is going to be positive here so what is this let's say hmm, v1 dot between negative one milliseconds and zero milliseconds that derivative is going to be a climb of four volts per millisecond and that is four kilo volts per second right so that is that and uh, what is the derivative here of course v1 naught is going to be zero here it's going to be zero here it's going to be zero here i say that already and over here that derivative v1 dot is going to be negative one negative that slope negative that's going to be four in three milliseconds four thirds of a kilovolt per second fine so we know what um, uh, the output is going to be this constant value negative 558 10 to the minus 3 that multiplies the derivative of the input signal the output is going to be 0 up to here right it's going to have a positive value in there it's going to be 0 in this zone that's good 0 and 0 and it's going to be 0 after 4 milliseconds so that is the output what is the value here it's going to be negative 5 58 10 to the negative of 3 multiplied by 4000 right and that is a certain value down here we need to determine that good and uh, between 1 and 4 oh that's going to be negative 558 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by negative 4 thirds of a thousand volts per second oh negative negative that is going to be positive and that value is going to be positive and constant between 1 and 4 so there is the output voltage shape we need to determine uh, this uh, that's going to be as I said, negative 558 10 to the negative 3 times 4000. That is negative 22.3 volts. And in here, well, that is negative 558 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by, and by this one, negative 4 thirds of a thousand of volts. That is 7.44 volts and that is the output and that is the answer to part c of this exercise thank you very much